welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to explain how to set up a dual boot system with Windows on OneDrive, Linux on another, and the BIOS boot menu used to select between them. This kind of configuration doesn't rely on a grub boot menu, and is my own preferred choice when setting up a dual boot system. So, let's go and see how and why I dual boot in this fashion. Here we have the Ryzen 5 computer that I built in a recent video. This is currently a single drive system with Windows 11 installed and the Samsung M.2 SSD. So, if we go across to the PC's video output and turn on the power, the system will boot directly into Windows. In a minute, I'm going to add a second SATA drive to the computer so I can demonstrate two methods for setting up a dual drive dual boot. But before we do that, let's go through the process of setting up a single drive dual boot as a useful comparison. And just before we do this, I'd note that before setting up any kind of dual boot, you need to make sure that your system is backed up and I'm also going to assume you already have Windows installed and want to add Linux as a second operating system. To do this, you'll need to have downloaded an ISO file for your chosen Linux distro and to have written it to a bootable USB drive using a program such as Rufus or Etcher. Here, I've already prepared a bootable USB drive containing Linux Mint. So, let's plug our Linux Mint drive into our system and reboot the computer. As it comes up again, I'll use the magic of filmmaking to pause the boot sequence so we can clearly see that on this system we can press delete to enter the BIOS or F12 to access the boot menu. Next, let's start time running again and press F12 to enter the boot menu. These can get confusing these days as they may list as here both physical drives here are Samsung Evo SSD and also our Corsair Voyager USB drive. And as well as listing the physical drives, we can also see the software bootloaders installed on them. Here Windows and here what's labeled UAFI Corsair Voyager 3.0000A, which here is Linux Mint. So I'll select this option and the computer will now boot into a live version of Linux Mint running from a USB drive. And here we are, Linux Mint has come up and just to make things easier to see on video, I'm now going to make a couple of scaling changes. And with that done, let's now launch the Linux Mint installer. Because this video is about dual booting rather than general Linux installation, I'm going to fast forward through all parts of the installers I show in this video, except for the sections related to dual boot. Talking of which, we've now arrived at the installation type screen here in Linux Mint, and as we can see, we've got a number of options. The first is to install Linux Mint alongside the Windows Boot Manager. In other words, this will set up a single drive dual boot. The other options are to erase the disk and just have Linux Mint installed, or there's something else option we'll be looking at later. But here, as I'm first showing you the single drive dual boot method, we'll stick with this first option and continue. Next, we have a choice to make, which is how much space to allocate to Linux Mint compared to Windows. And at the moment, it's given a lot of space to Linux Mint, but we could drag this thing in the middle to give, for example, less space to Linux Mint. With things set up like this, all we now have to do is to click on Install. And of course, it checks we really want to do this. Yes, we do. And it checks again because this is really serious. We'll again click on Continue. And I'll now fast forward through the rest of the installer. And there we are, it's finished. So let's test this out by pressing Restart Now. And Linux Mint reminds us to remove our USB drive. So if we now press Enter, the system will reboot and should show us a Grub boot menu. There it is. And as you can see, we can select here between Linux Mint, which is the, uh, the top option there. It would go to that by default, or we could go into Windows. And after setting one of these up, I always test Windows first because uh, that's the kind of person I am. So let's go down to Windows Boot Manager and press Enter to boot into Windows. 
and that seems to have worked. Windows is looking as lovely as Windows ever can. But if we now restart, and this time on the Grub menu, we will leave it on the Linux Mint. You can see at the bottom of the screen is a timer. We could just press Enter for Linux Mint, but I'll allow the timer to complete. There it goes, and it'll now boot into Linux Mint. Yes, and there we are. It's showing the first boot thing because obviously it's the first boot. We'll get rid of that. But uh, basically we've got our single drive dual boot system. And this means we can now run Windows or Linux on this computer with each of the operating systems having full access to the hardware. And this would not be the case if, for example, we were running Windows or Linux in a virtual machine. However, there are some disadvantages. Let's just reboot the system again. And here we are back on the Grub Boot menu, and I'll just press the down arrow to go down to Windows to stop the timer. And the first disadvantage I can note here is that a single drive dual boot setup does slow down the process of booting into Windows, as the Grub Boot menu always boots up before Windows or Linux. And as we can see here, Windows is not actually set as the default here. You could edit this menu if you mess around, but however we look at this, our access to Windows has been a little degraded by this setup. Secondly, as we saw in the installer, we've inevitably lost some space on our Windows system drive because we've given it to Linux. More seriously, if we decide we no longer want Linux on this computer, we may have an interesting time removing the Grub Boot menu from our Windows system drive. And even more fundamentally, whilst everything here is working just fine, we could select Linux or Windows, it is possible for this Grub Boot menu to become corrupted. So, for example, a major Windows update can corrupt the Grub Boot menu, leaving you unable to access Windows or Linux unless you're able to implement a technical fix. And so, for these last two reasons in particular, you may want to avoid a single drive dual boot. Right, I've now returned the PC to its previous state with only Windows installed. And if we boot it up, it goes straight into Windows. But let's now set up a dual drive dual boot. And there are two ways to do this, one of which requires more messing around with hardware and the other with software. And we'll start with the more hardware centric method. First, let's shut down the PC, and with the power turned off, I'm going to take this Kingston SSD, which we're going to use as our Linux drive, and I'm going to connect it up with a SATA data cable and power. Next, I'm going to temporarily remove the M.2 SSD on which Windows is installed. There we go. So, now the only drive connected is the one on which we're going to install Linux. Note that if you have Windows installed on a 2.5 inch SATA drive, you could disconnect the drive by removing either its SATA data cable or its power cable or both. But whatever you do, the key thing is that we now have the drive on which we're going to install Linux connected, but the drive on which Windows is installed temporarily disconnected. Next, we'll plug in our Linux Mint USB drive and power up the PC and I'm going to press F12 to access this machine's boot menu, where we can see clearly we've got the USB drive available. We've also got our Kingston SSD I've just connected, but we don't have our Windows drive. So we know that the Windows drive has definitely been disconnected from this computer. So let's boot from the USB drive and start Linux Mint. And as last time, now we've arrived on the desktop, I'm going to make a few scaling changes after which we'll run up the installer and fast forward on to this point, to installation type. And I think I should point out here that this is what we see in Linux Mint, but you'll see a slightly different screen with similar options in other distros. But if we come back here to Linux Mint, you can see our installation type this time around is limited to either a raised disk and install Linux Mint or do something else. There's no option here to install alongside Windows because our Windows drive isn't connected, so Linux can't detect it. And indeed, if you can see an option here for installing alongside Windows, you haven't disconnected your Windows drive. You need to quit out of this, shut down the system, disconnect the drive, and then run up to get back to this point. 
Anyway, here we are where we can now press install now and then confirm what we're doing. And I'd point out that here the drive we're using is completely blank. It's in a factory state as if you just got it out the packet as a new drive. If your drive isn't in that state, do be aware that installing Linux on it will delete everything on the drive. And Linux will probably ask several times for you to confirm you really want to do this. But with a decision made and Linux being installed, we'll fast forward through the rest of the installer. And there we are, it's finished. So if we now restart the computer, remove our USB drive, and the machine should now boot into Linux Mint. And it does, so Linux Mint has been installed on the two and a half inch SSD. But what about Windows? Well, the next thing I'm going to do is to close down the system and also turn off the power. And it's now time to put our Windows SSD back into the computer. There we go. Or if you have Windows on a two and a half inch SSD, at this point, you need to reconnect its SATA and or power cable. And with this done, we can turn the computer back on, boot up the system, and I'm going to press F12 on this computer to access the BIOS boot menu, where, as you can see, we now have the option to select Windows or Linux. It actually shows Ubuntu here because Linux Mint is based on Ubuntu, but we know that is Linux Mint. But initially, I'm going to test Windows still works, so we'll click on Windows. And yes, here we are back in uh, Windows 11. We've still got Windows on the system. And if we want to access Linux, we can do that as well, as I'm sure you would guess. We can just uh, do a restart, press F12 for the BIOS boot menu, and we could here now select Ubuntu, which we know is Linux Mint. And I think I'll get rid of this dialog popping up every time we do this. And in fact, let's do another reboot, and this time I'm not going to select the boot menu. We'll just do a straight restart and let it run through, where by default, the machine has booted into Windows. So we only have to use the F12 key to access the BIOS boot menu on boot if we want to boot to Linux rather than Windows. However, you might want things the other way around. So let's do a, a final reboot. Let's restart yet again. And this time I'm pressing the delete key to go into the BIOS. And if we move across here at the top, we go along to boot. You can see we've got boot option priorities. The first one here is Windows. The second is Linux, labeled as Ubuntu, but that is Linux Mint. But if we wanted to boot by default into Linux and access Windows via the BIOS boot menu, we could change this around. We could go boot option number one, enter. We could set that here to Ubuntu like that. Windows would move to number two. That's not what I want here. I'm gonna put that back to Windows. And if I now save and exit setup like that, there we go. We know that this machine will boot directly back into Windows. And do note here, we're not seeing the Grub boot menu because it's not installed on the Windows drive. And a final thing to note is if we no longer want to use Linux on this system, we can simply remove the Linux SSD. And the PC will return to having a single operating system with Windows completely undisturbed. We've just set up a PC with Windows on its first SSD, Linux on its second, and the Grub boot menu also on the second, so that it doesn't interfere with Windows. And we achieved this by removing the Windows drive during the Linux installation. However, if you don't want to remove the Windows drive, it's possible to achieve the same result using the Linux installer. To demonstrate, I've returned the second SSD to factory state which I did using the disk part command that I've covered in another video. I've also inserted our Linux Mint USB drive, so in the BIOS boot menu, we can see our Samsung and Kingston SSDs with Linux no longer installed on the Kingston drive, and we've also got here our USB drive. So let's boot into Linux from the USB, and as usual, I'll do some scaling, and then we'll run up the installer. And here, we now have the option to install Linux alongside Windows, which would place it on our first SSD with a Grub boot menu, as we saw earlier. And we also have the option still to erase disk and install Linux Mint, which disk, of course, would have to be determined. 
and we've also got something else so that we can install Linux on the second SSD with its pesky grub boot menu also on that drive. And as previously I'd point out, what we're going to see here is what you'll see in Linux Mint. It'll look slightly different in other Linux distros, but the principles will be the same. So let's continue. And we can see by default, we'll be installing to the NVMe SSD, the one with Windows on it. And we'll be putting the bootloader, including the Grub Boot menu, also onto that Samsung SSD or Windows drive. And of course, we don't want to do that. So let's straight away change where we're going to put the bootloader to the Kingston SSD there, which we can see is SDA. And if we now also go up here and we scroll down, we can find SDA. We've got an SDA and also an SDB. SDB is the flash drive we're booting from here, but we want SDA. So we'll go up to there. SDA is our Kingston drive like that. But we can't click on install straight away. You'll see install now is grayed out because we need to create a root partition. So we'll go to the free space we have on this drive and click that like that. We're going to mount at the root, which is down there like that, and OK. For some reason, the screen moved around again, but never mind. We can go back to uh, there we are, select SDA, and you'll see now we can click on install now. So let's do that. And as usual, it checks to see if things are OK, which they are. So we will continue. And again, I'll fast forward through the installer. And here we are once again, it's completed. So we will restart now and remove our USB drive. And in theory, we now have Linux Mint and its bootloader and grub boot menu on the Kingston SSD. And as the computer reboots, I'm going to press the delete key to take us into the BIOS because I strongly suspect if we look in boot that yes, Linux has set itself as the first boot option. I'm going to change that back to Windows like that. Linux can be second and we'll now save and exit and let the machine reboot. And I'm hoping we will now boot directly into Windows without seeing a grub boot menu. And it does indeed look like this is going to be the case. It is. Isn't it great how occasionally we're actually happy to see Windows? Anyway, what about Linux? Let's test that it's working as well. So let's now reboot and hit that F12 to bring up the BIOS boot menu. Here we are. And yes, we've got Ubuntu available as well as Windows. And Ubuntu is listed against the Samsung SSD, even though we didn't put the Linux bootloader on this drive, part of Grub was still placed there by Linux because it could see the drive. And this is why I always prefer to set up a dual boot by removing the Windows drive rather than doing the method we've just gone through. But this will still work. Let's click on Ubuntu there. And it'll now bring up a Grub boot menu, which includes Windows as well as Linux, because of course the installer could see Windows because we didn't disconnect the drive. But anyway, let's uh, boot into Linux. And here we are, our final Welcome to Linux Mint screen. In my experience, dual drive dual boot systems are very reliable and more so than single drive dual boots, which rely on a grub boot menu, which can become corrupted. So if you need access to two operating systems and a virtual machine doesn't meet your requirements, then a dual drive dual boot is well worth considering. This said, please be aware that no form of dual boot is without its risks. So never set one up of any kind until you've backed everything up and you're fully aware of the risks you are prepared to accept the consequences. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.